you very much, Frank. I trust that if you can uh, protect Intel, uh, we have we have hope. <laughs> um, our next speaker, uh, Asaf Ashkenazi, serves as director of product management for Qualcomm Technologies uh, Incorporated. In this role, he is responsible for the oversight of all security products related to Qualcomm business, including mobile computing and Internet of Things. Ashkenazi also serves as a board member uh, of the Fido Alliance. Prior to his product management role, Ashkenazi served as lead security architect defining Qualcomm's security solutions. Ashkenazi has more than 15 years of security experience spanning across business management, strategic marketing, and engineering. He began his career at Motorola Semiconductors working on innovative security hardware for mobile and embedded devices. He also served as chief security architect at Freescale Semiconductor. Asaf, please. So I decided not to stand on the podium so I can see how much time I have left. So I'm going to talk about the human factor and how do we have or how do we address the problem of the human factor in security and how cognitive technologies in humanizing the interface between machines and human can improve security. So when we look at um, what is con cognitive technologies and how we humanize interfaces. Usually, if you need to put it, if you take it as a, a, on a nutshell, you have the perception, and this is where the device or the machine gather information. It can hear, it can see, it can use other sensors on the device to realize what's going on in the environment. And then it learns, this is the uh, real reas uh, reasoning part. It learns and it anticipates what the user will do. And then last, it takes action and it acts upon the information and the processing that it got. So let's look at how an IT manager, when he comes home, play with his kid. So. His son wants to play ball with him, but how can he know that this is his son? Like, so he's asked, of course, hey, son, I cannot be sure that it's you. I want to have your password. What is your password? And the poor kid says, hey, dad, I forgot my password. I don't know what it is. And of course, well, no problem. You can go to your mother. You tell her when is the last time that we had ice cream together, and she will reset your password. Well, of course, this is not how it is being done. But this is how we are communicating with machines. And it's not intuitive at all. So how is the human brain authenticates people? If you think about it, it's quite amazing. We know very seamlessly and automatically to authenticate people that we met in the past. And we do it very, very good and we do it immediately. How do we do that? We observe, we look, and we recognize their face. And we know very well to uh, distinguish between a video or a photo and the real person. It's not all, we hear. The human uh, brain can hear and recognize voice very, very well. Even on the phone, when you talk to somebody, you can pretty good rec recognize who you're talking to. And then we also look at the context, the contextual recognition. If, for example, I'm on a business trip to China, and in my customer's meeting room, I see my son, there is probably something wrong. So we know where we will see different people and what situation we'll see different people. And it's working very well for millions of years. So why changing it? And this is part of how the future of authentication will look like. 
it will use biometric information from the device that you are holding or using. It starts with a fingerprint, but not the fingerprint that you recognize or know today that you have to swipe your finger. No, this is history. The future will have the sensor embedded in the device, so when you hold it, it will automatically get your fingerprint. It will also use voice identification when available. When you're talking, the microphone will listen and will know that it is you. And then the camera can take a snapshot of your face or your iris to authenticate you. And if you have a smartwatch, it can also capture your heartbeat that can be used as a biometric information. So all of this biometric information will be gathered together into a processing machine, but not just the biometric, also the behavioral. Your typical activities and where you do stuff, the machine will learn and it will get to know you, so it will have the contextual information. The way that you hold your device, in most of the phones that you have today, you have accelerometers, you can measure how I hold the device, how I move. So the device can know me by just picking up the device, just by walking, because every one of us is walking in a different way. And then I can use other devices, your smartwatch and other devices that we have tied together or together two together can increase the reliability of authentication. And as Orna mentioned, when you get to your car, you will not have to pull your mobile phone and start authenticating yourself. The mobile phone will know from your pocket or if it is in your bag, it will know that it's you. And it will open the car or open the house, your house, when you get home. Or when you launch an application, will already know that it's you so you don't have to use any passwords or swipe your finger. So this is an example how humanizing, how using cognitive technologies can resolve uh, some of the problems that we have, which is authentication, which is a big one. But there are other ways where we can use uh, the, um, uh, these technologies. Let's look at the, or if you observe, on learn the recent big attacks on data centers, you will learn that most of them started uh, from a targeted phishing attack or a targeted device of an indiv individual, a contractor or an employee in the organization that allow the attacker to get the first um, way in into the uh, IT system. And a lot of these today are based on phishing attacks. As our security solutions becoming more and more sophisticated, attackers are going to or going after the human factor, trying to trick people to give them information that will be used to attack the organization. It can be used also to get password and other information that allows them to, for example, drain your bank account or do other uh, fraudulent activity. How do they do that? How do they trick us? So first, they need to get information about you to make it very reliable. And the good way to do that is using your mobile phone. Applications. We all know these applications that are free and are wonderful. And except for the free lunch that you got here, usually in life you don't have free meals. You download the application, it's free, it's great. The question is what this application is doing. And it doesn't have to be defined as malicious because a lot of these applications are upfront. They are saying, hey, if you download me, I want to have access to your calendar, I want to have access to your photos, to your emails, and to your location. And guess what? Most people don't even read these permissions. They just Press accept and install um, the application. 
And this is where the attacker starts the attack in gathering information about you. It reads your email, the calendar, you understand what's your role in the organization, who are the people you're interacting with, and what are the projects that you are working on. And he's using it to his advantage to launch the targeted attack. So in this example, um, Packer learned about who is the executive manager in the organization of this employee. And he knows that he's working with Jennifer Lou. So he puts it and is doing uh, name dropping. Hey, I just bumped into your teammate to make it reliable. And then he's putting more a sense of urgency. To say, hey, I'm in a very important customer meeting. I need to get this data and please send it to me immediately. And by the way, I have some problem to access my email, so if you can send it, please, to my uh, private email address. And this is where employees are getting tricked. They are sending information. So how does the future look like in terms of preventing or mitigating this kind of attack? The solution is teach your uh, device or the machine to think like a human, but not just a human being. Think like the user self. So the machine can learn and look at what is the typical behavior of the user. What application is downloading, what time is he using this application, in what context, when he likes to share photos or other things. And then, instead of trying to look for malicious application running on the device, based on pre-knowledge of the that uh, this application has, the machine just observes on what happens on the device. So for example, I downloaded an application, and suddenly in the background, it decides to share contacts. Well, if the machine is smart enough, it knows that, well, touch screen is off and the device is not moving so probably nobody holds it so the user is not using the device then why this application needs to send the contacts and it understands from the situation that something is wrong and it will block the access of this application to these resources which means that in our case you download the application, this application in the background wants to see different information, it will block it and will not allow it to send information without knowing whether the application is good or bad, not looking at it. The same thing, your machine can learn how you behave and when it is not you, it can know the device was stolen and it will shut it off or kill it. So there are many examples of how we can use this technology of machine learning and cognitive technologies to learn or teach our machine to behave like human and to get benefits for security. Until now, these technology were mostly used for other purposes. However, this is the time to get this technology and let it help us with security. Every one of us here has a supercomputer in his pocket, and we can use it to provide better security through these technologies. And these technologies look like science fiction, science fiction, but it's not. It will come pretty soon. And the team at Qualcomm, especially the team here in Haifa, are working on this kind of exciting technologies that will improve the security, but also make it easier for us as users to use security. Thank you very much.